Hello friends, we have been discussing Renaissance and during Renaissance, Renaissance, they had to face three problems, English is, English, including English, English is also vernacular. Then uh, first one was the problem of recognition, second the problem of <coughs> orthography or right writing, and third the problem of enrichment, and then we saw there was great demand for translations and therefore English was not adequate enough to express these new thoughts, new ideas. So some people started borrowing, wholesale borrowing, and uh, there were two groups of people, one is the purists and the other is others, those who supported the borrowings, and uh, those who, the purists, they called these uh, borrowed words by a nickname that is Inkhorn Thames. You may get short note on that. In content, just borrowed words. On the ground that these are dark words and obscene words. And then we found that at the end of the century, there was a compromise. And uh, on the one side you had got Thomas Edith, and the other side you have got not our T.S. Edith, <laughs> this other person. And then we had uh, Richard Mulcaster and so on, Patnam, and we saw the. Uh, came to a compromise, isn't it? Okay. Then now the simple thing is that you have to remember a list of words. That's all. See, words borrowed from uh, Latin, from Greek, from Romance languages, French, Italian, and uh, Spanish. Also some adaptations, coinages, then uh, prefix and suffix, and uh, and such uh, ways by which. As we enrich the vocabulary today, those days also. So we'll see some examples you know, for your examinations very important now because if you don't support your uh, exam, I mean your your uh, answers with uh, uh, examples, then that is not no value. Therefore, you should know at least few of these words because a few of them you must know because so, so that you can enrich your uh, your answer. Also. Okay, so we see many basic words are borrowed. Basic words. The basic words means, you know, nouns, adjectives, and verbs. These are basic words. Many basic words are borrowed. For words like allusion, atmosphere, autograph, symbol term, autograph. See, Allusion, you can remember. Allusion, autograph, autograph, or five or six words at least. <laughs> then we have got a autograph is something that happens in our uh, end of every year. No? You write your autograph. Then you have capsule is a word that you can use because every day people are taking capsules. No? Then you can excursion. Every year we are going for excursion. So you can say capsule. <coughs> Excursion and so on. So these are the simple words we are using every day. So you can remember that's why disrespect, disability, you can have expectation, hello. These are all words. You can have it. Adjectives. Adjectives have expensive. These days people are leading very expensive life. You can say simple words so that you can remember at least a few. Otherwise, you can see uh, emancipate, women's liberation. Emancipate is Emancipation, yes. Ah, so, you know, the emancipated, this adjective, you know, is expensive, you can have, then you have got, uh, uh, what is, habitual, see, insane, insane is not a good word to remember, habitual, habit is, is good, habitual, habitual, uh, then uh, insane, Insane, not a good word, but uh, for the time being, you can remember that. Okay. Habitual actions, you can say. That you can easily understand, it, isn't it? And then you have got the words like imperson, impersonality. TSL is impersonality of art. Impersonal, you can remember. And this, more words you can collect from uh, different sources, but for the time being, I think this is enough to, you have to remember also. And then you have got the verbs like uh, adapt. Adapt, benefit, benefit, then uh, emancipate, emancipate, 
uh, alienation. Alienation. There is a theme in in twenty-seventh literature. They extinguish, exist, you know? and then uh, you have other words like consolidate. Many words are there, but this is, I think, enough for you to remember this. Okay. So basic words borrowing is point one. Now, what is the point point two for uh, enrichment? So these words, I think, you can remember. No? Noun, capsule, autograph, you can remember. So it's insane, you can remember. Right? Uh, that's the adjective and so on. Then uh, you see what we have seen already, I told you, from Greek language. Very, very, we, as we think, those days very tough, anonymous. That's a Greek. From Greek. Borrowing from Greek. Anonymous, you know, anonymous. Some people write anonymous letters to the authorities, means without signing and without uh, giving their name, anonymous. But that's not the, that's a bad habit, it's not the good. Don't be habit, don't do such things habitual. Just now we have that word habitual. Right? So anonymous is uh, at me, at me, you know, highest point, at me. It's famous, you know? that's a good word, at me. At me, means highest point. Highest point of anything is at me, you can say. Then you have got uh, words like, uh, see, catastrophe is uh, very, very often used now. Catastrophe, lexicon, these are Greek words, catastrophe, catastrophe. What is catastrophe means? A sudden, terrible happening. Well, you remember last year in Kerala, so the floods, so it's a catastrophe. So it's a catastrophe. And then you have got uh, ephemeral. It's a good word, some words very often used even. Ephemeral. Ephemeral means temporary. Temporary. Instead of saying that ephemeral, you can say temper thermometer, tonic. That you can remember. Because uh, you are used taking tonic every day, you know. Yes. Thermometer. Thermometer. So these are from uh, Greek language. So borrowing from Greeks. And then you have got there is a second point. Basic words from Latin, then certain words from uh, certain learned words, you can say. So, terms in medicine are en encephalograph. Encephalograph. Cephalos means head. Graph means writing. So, encephalograph means writing of the head. That means image of the head. So, there are many words like that. In uh, then you have got, you know, this uh, uh, cartography, cartography, that is a Greek word. So such words, in medicine you have got many words like this. Thermometer, when, when, when I told you, many of these um, names of diseases, you know, uh, that is, uh, you have got uh, uh, diseases like uh, arthritis, arthritis, because it is in Greece means infection. Listen, it is arthritis, carditis means infection of the <coughs> sorry, infection of the heart. Myocarditis, infection of the muscles of the heart. And it's better not to know these names of diseases because you know some people will think, ah, I also have it. <laughs> Better not, better we will not go further with that. And Tommy, Tommy in Greek means cutter. So we can see uh, that is, uh, that's the science now, that is studying about insects. This is called the entomology. Tommy, entomology. Entomology, three cuts. The insects have got three cuts, you know. So therefore it's a Entomology, entomology. It's about um, hysterectomy. Anywhere you find Tommy, Tommy is not a name, but the Tommy, the, the Greek word means cut. Hysterectomy, cutting. Cutting, vasectomy, no, cutting. That's the meaning, cutting. I see that. So, a lot of words have ended into uh, this. Tommy is used in many uh, terms in in medicine. So better you don't know much about these things because there will be people, you know, some people, you know, I know they have got, uh, uh, that is a kind of thing called uh, 
psychosomatic diseases. Sayam. Love all those psychology, words in psychology. Suke. Suke is the um, Greek word for mind. I mean, so psychology. No. Study of a uh, mind. That is suko. Suke. So you have got number of them. In, as I said just now, it's better not to know. But schizophrenia. So, it, it sounds very <laughs> nice, but the worst, one of the worst diseases that human beings can suffer. Schizophrenia. What is that? I know, but I am not going to tell you because then immediately you will think, ah, this man has got schizophrenia. <laughs> he may be an innocent person. Yeah, that is the thing. Okay, then you have got a lot of words like, uh, you know, ah, there is another very famous word, no? That is uh, misanthropy. Anthropos means man in uh, uh, Greek. So misanthropy, hater of man. Philanthropy, lover of man. The philanthropy. Misanthropy. Shakespeare's play, theme of Athens, Athens. That the theme is misanthropy. Misanthropy. He was a hater of man. So yeah, the catastrophe. Many words ending in strophe is also Greek of it. Listen. Misanthropy, catastrophe, then uh, philanthropy. Again, Sophia. That is uh, the some girls have this name, Sophia. Sophia means wisdom. Sophist, sophist, you know, a group of philosophers called the sophists. So, Greek. so, Greek language, in fact, you can say it has influenced English. I don't know. Uh, 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 all these very uh, scientific uh, words, uh, then words relating to medicine, words relating to philosophy, and so on, these have been taken and borrowed from uh, Greek language. Then the, I told you about adaptation. See, some words were taken from Latin and then change the ending, cut the ending, replace the ending. Examples I'll tell you. See, ex, ex, extra, uh, consultare, that's the Latin word, consultare, adaptations. So it is adaptations. Consult, consultare, this is the Latin. So then, cut this ending, English word is consult. Consult. See that. Then externalis. Externalis. Ah, sorry, externus. That's the thing. They change this to and. Then you have got the external. Conspicuous. Who us. They change this and then made it us. So you have conspi. Conspicuous. Conspic. Conspicuous. Yes. Conspicuous. No, conspicuous. He is conspicuous by his absence. His absence. And then you have got the other, other words like that. You have got the exotic. I told you exotic. Yeah. Exoticus became exotic. And uh, you have got celeritas. That is right. Celeritas. And ta, tas, that is replaced by it. So you have got cele, celerity. Not it, but tv. Celerity. So this is a, a change adapted words. Understand? Exoticus, concept, already. Conjecturalis. 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 That is saying to, sorry, this is conjecturalis. Conjectural, uh, that is. This part is dropped. Then you get the English word conjectural. They are dressed in English suits. Latin words dressed in English suit. That you can say. Or English dress sequence. Understand? Then another, you remember in the, it told you about the, Another is old words used in new meaning. And I gave you an example of fastidious. This is another word, objection. Object. Object. Now the old meaning was uh, cast off. Cast off. Thrown out. 
cast off, thrown off. Today it means, I mean later on it means misundu, misundu. So cast off, the word is again used, reused, uh, with the animal meaning. And just, almost when you are cast off, you are misundu. <laughs> that way you can say, you can argue like that. Rejected. Original meaning was rejected. Like a fastidious. Original meaning was uh, scornful and proud. This is a fastidious person, means very proud. But today it means hard to please. Person who takes too much interest in his personal appearance and so on. Sometimes they stand in front of the mirror for always just to see how the uh, how 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 do they look, how do they smile, how do they what is uh, their uh, eyebrows and, and what not, I don't know. So you have got abdic persons, then you have got that. So these are examples for reusing, reintroducing the universe. And you have got plenty of words from French language. You you can't uh, you can't distinguish this. This happened that you know, it happened to all languages, Italian, French and English. So Latin and Greek language sometimes uh, the French language borrowed, and from them we borrow. We means English people borrow. So words like a fidelity, you can say fidelity, modest, sublime. Sublime is a French word. Sublime, modest, modest, sublime, etc. Came through French. Modest, sublime, through French. That is Romance languages. Italian we have. Portico. Very often we use that word, portico, that is an uh, Italian word, portico, Italian. Portico, stanza, yes, that is Italian, stanza, portico, stanza, uh, words like uh, balcony, yes, and um, you have got uh, granite grotto, you know, grotto. Granite is, uh, you are familiar with granite, no? So these are uh, Italian, this is Italian. Grotto, etc. Italian. So some words. Then you have got Spanish. Armada is very famous. One. Spanish words. Spanish. Armada. Spanish Armada. Isn't it? Mosquito. Uh, our friend. Mosquito. Mosquito is our friend now because you cannot uh, live without them. <laughs> they will be always with us. So mosquito, you can remember. Whenever a mosquito comes and sits on your body, you can say, he's, he's from <coughs> Spain. <coughs> the word is Spain. <coughs> Another, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Another very common word is banana. You have seen banana. So when you eat banana, you can think of that. Huh? Oh, this is Spain. We are eating Spain, Spanish. See that? Then you have got uh, cocoa, maize, uh, almada and so on. And then there are coinages, I told you. Belly bond, that is a new word, coinages. Coinages. See, belly bond, belly. This is a word uh, coined by Spencer. Bell, bell means beauty, bell, bell. La belle dame sans mercy. You know the, uh, the title of that poem no? by John Gates. La belle dame sans mercy. Beautiful lady, bell dame. So bell born means beautiful maid. That's one. But not these days we don't use such kind of things. So there's a coin I just have. And then you have got the derivations. You wolfish derivations like this. Derivations. So this is how the language enriches this. Wolfish. Wolf sunshiny. Sunshiny. See? But these days we just say sunshine. We don't say sunshine. Me, we say sunshine. Changeful. See that? Then you have got the. Uh, we don't say changeful now. We really change. So, <coughs> so, thus, the answer by 1650. End of Renaissance. This problem also was solved. Okay. So see you again with another lecture next time. Till then, bye. Have a nice time. Enjoy your life.